Hello everyone and welcome back. Next to me I have my W204 C63 AMG and in my past three years of ownership I have established that it's fun, it's practical, it's comfortable, it's extremely fast and it sounds glorious. But if there's one area it is well known for, it is for how it is extremely uneconomical. Or are they? Now you see, in my ownership experience at least, I have nothing but good things to say about its fuel economy. During my three years of ownership, I have done around 15,000 miles and I have averaged around 19 miles per gallon. And I think that's rather respectable. But how good can a C63 be on fuel economy? Well, to find out, I'm going to take it out of its comfort zone and I am going to attempt to drive this car from London to Edinburgh on one tank of fuel, which is a distance of around 400 miles. So I'm going to get some rest and I will join you tomorrow morning, bright and early in London. Well, good morning, everyone. You now join me in the Mercedes Benz. It's currently seven o'clock in the morning and we are currently in Brent's Cross, which is uh, somewhere in the outskirts of North London. Um, the journey is going to take around six hours and 36 minutes and it will be the series of mainly the M1 and then as you get further up north past Leeds I think it is you eventually get onto the A1M and then it will be that road basically all the way to the end which is going to be in a ESO garage which is our end destination and that will be near I think it's called Hollywood Park it's near there so it's, it's enough Edinburgh for me uh, and it's a journey of 394 miles and will take us six hours and 36 minutes so yeah um obviously i didn't do this blind i did want to check beforehand to make sure this is actually possible and it says i'm gonna have to average around 27.5 miles per gallon um if i was to do 400 miles so i've taken precautions i've got one of these in me it's, it's called jerry so jerry can and i'll be filling this up with five liters of fuel if things start to get a bit sinister so yeah Obviously, I want a bit of a surplus. I don't want to literally get there and empty and, um, you know, give myself an absolute ball ache. So I will, yeah, take the five litres with me and I will then embark my journey once I fill up in a, in a moment or two. And then we will, uh, I suppose, start our journey from there. So let's not waste any more time. Let's fill this car up and let's get going. Ah, no, that's it. Every little job, everything counts. All right, everyone, I've just now filled up. So all I need to do now really is just reset my computer um, before we start our journey. So we're gonna reset that now. Now our fuel consumption and everything is completely zero. And then when I turn on the engine, I'm just gonna get away immediately and then we'll embark our journey. So here we go. This is the last time I'm gonna fire up before I get to the next destination, which is gonna be in six hours time. So um, here we go. Oh God, it's going on, go. <laughs> God, this is the most stressful thing I've done in my life, but I'm so excited about this. I love fuel economy, and already I'm in a bit of peril because I'm about to break and now use fuel to get away to wait for this bus. It is absolutely futile I get through this series of city Thank town you. driving. No, please be quiet. Um, yes, I need to make sure I get through this completely unscathed, and it's absolutely futile I get through the city driving with minimal start-stop traffic because that can make all the difference. So it's very important we get through this in skates. I need to turn that off because that's going to drive me absolutely mad. I don't even know why I turned it on. I've got my own sat nav already. We're seeing grim readings. We've got 20. Please take the second exit. Oh my. Please be quiet. Oh God, I've got to stop this. <laughs> Please take the second. Please take the second exit oh. at the right <laughs> onto Tilling Road. For God's sake! I pressed this ear icon on the thing, and I thought it would turn it down, but clearly it's just making it more annoying and louder. There's no need for you to talk that loud. It's very early in the morning. Exit the roundabout. Yeah, I, oh, please. Prepare to. 
Yes, I've just figured out how to turn her off. That's brilliant news for me. Right, so at the moment we're not seeing very good readings. We're currently averaging 20.8 miles per gallon, which is quite short compared to what we need because the figure in question we need is 27.5 miles per gallon. But obviously, like I stated earlier, we don't really want to get there, absolutely nothing. So I really need to be in a surplus, which obviously means I kind of average more like 29 to 30 miles per gallon. And I know it's possible because I've seen pictures on the C63 Facebook groups of um, their readings getting good MPG. So I know it's possible, it's just, there are so many factors which can just change everything. Um, and I think I'm about to join the M1 now. So I'm really feathering the throttle right now. This is so anal and I love it. I really love this sort of stuff. I'm so excited for this journey. And that's it now. I'm, I'm now on the M1, the speed is national. And I'm on the M1 for how many miles? Well, there's no further instructions for another 148 miles. Blimey, blimey. So I'm going to set the cruise control now at 65 miles an hour and we're latched, we're locked in, that's it. That's my life for the next six hours. And I've never been more excited. Our current rev range is around 1,700, 1,650 RPM, it's hard to tell. But that's the sort of RPM we're gonna need to ensure that we get the magical 3-0 MPG figure because that's really what I want to work towards. Another achievement will be not only just making it there but also getting 30 miles per gallon has always been my goal in this car and I've never ever quite got there. I've, been, I've got about 29.5 miles per gallon but I've never actually like really tried whereas this journey in particular is very mundane and it would take a very long time as a series of no roundabout to just be literally motorway all the way and at 65 miles per hour as well, it should be possible. So let's just actually check how much range I've got. So I don't live anywhere near London. Um, I had to actually drive down to London as a starting point. And for those of you saying, oh, Brent Cross is not really London. Well, it's as London as it is for me because I'm not driving any further because I, this is gonna be a one hell of a long journey. And just to have to drive an hour to get here or so was enough for me. Um, so my current distance uh, displayed on my computer is telling me that I've got about 295 miles of range um, and that is going off basing the journey I just did basically and that was around an hour at 70 miles per hour cruise control. There was a bit of dual carriageway and some roundabouts in between so it wasn't perfect and it could have been better. But as I'm speaking to you right now I can see the distance is increasing at a very generous speed which is very good to see. So it seems 65 miles per hour is paying dividends already. Another thing I was actually worried about when taking this car to London was we'll have to pay any charges because um, I know it's strict and you gotta pay like a congestion zone and there's ULES things. I don't really know anything about it because I never go to London. So I went online, I did a check and I thought I'm about to pay some extra because this is a very um, uneconomical car. It's like in the highest tax brackets. It's, it's got terrible CO2 emission things. Uh, I don't know what Euro regulations you meant to meet now. Is it Euro 6? I don't, I can't remember. I'm not interested. But I can happily announce if you are a C63 owner and you are afraid of going to London because of the ULES requirements, I can please report to you that this meets them and you are essentially a polar bear driving into London uh, in the surrounding areas, that's ULES. So I didn't have to pay anything. I, I got away scot-free and had to drive this through. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. It doesn't make any sense though that they're trying to get rid of like economical diesels, which are apparently bad. Whereas this 6.2 naturally aspirated V8 is more deemed as friendly to the environment than a diesel, uh, I don't know, 530D from 2003 or whatever. I don't, I don't know how polluting they really are, but it's a lot better in fuel than this is, that's for sure. Now, whilst we're on this long, perilous voyage of a journey, um, I guess I've got many things to talk to you about, such as I should probably explain why I'm doing this journey in particular. Uh, now, there are many reasons, um, and there's, but there's a couple that I want to let you know about. Um, 
one of which, if you are an avid viewer of this channel, it is no secret that I am very partial towards fuel economy. Um, I absolutely love it and I've done many videos regarding this topic and I just find it interesting in general um, when it's due to using more unusual cars for fuel economy challenges such as a naturally aspirated 6.2 litre V8. They are often standard. Uh, this car in particular is standard for how bad it is in the fuel economy and many owners say, oh, they're terrible, but in my ownership at least, like I said in my intro, they're not actually that bad, depending how you drive it. I mean, I've done many journeys where I've done 28 to 29 miles per gallon, and I just really, really love doing fuel economy challenges because I just find them very interesting to see what can you actually achieve when you really put the car, not for its paces, but if you just drive it so carefully, what can you really get out of it? Is it really as bad as people say they are? I don't think so. Then the most inspiring reason why I'm doing this video is because of uh, a Top Gear episode. If you guys are watching before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is where Jeremy Clarkson drove an Audi A8 to a 4.2 litre diesel V8. And he drove that all the way from London to Edinburgh and back, get back to London again on one tank of fuel, which I think is just, I, I've watched that countless of times and all the fuel economy challenges that they do on Top Gear, I remember watching avidly as a child, I watched them so many times and I just thought, well, when I Googled to see what range a C63 can do if you average a certain miles per gallon, I just had to do it. I've been wanting to do this video for like two to three years, um, but I've never had like the, the nerves to do it. So now I'm finally doing it, and I've just always had just excitement over the fuel economy in general. But in short, they are the reasons why I want to do this video in particular. It means a lot because of how much I love fuel economy and those um, nostalgic Top Gear fuel challenges. I just thought I've got to try it myself and see if the C63 is up for the challenge and can it do it it's going to be very touch and go I know for sure that's a very loud Focus RS but yeah I, I think I think you'll be able to do it it's just going to be very touch and go and it's going to be very dependent and that's a very loud Ford Capri <laughs> keep interrupting myself by all these noisy cars I think there's a car show going up north near Santa Pod, so that's why Obviously there are many eventualities and things that could go wrong in between now and then of six hours of driving, such as headwinds, it's, it's, it's extremely windy at the moment, um, and it has been, so that's something that can go against us. Uh, unforeseen traffic, which can then block roads and caravans, I don't know, blowing in the wind and toppling over, a badger that might run out on the road and then cause a closure of lanes. Of course, I'll probably need to go to the water closet to urinate as well, which then obviously, um, I don't know, yeah, it might hamper the MPG. So there's many things that can go wrong in between now and then. So that's why it's imperative I have this buffer to fall back on if need be. So guys, just a quick update. Um, I just, I just haven't really noticed. I've just been my own business and then I've looked down and realised that the actual distance I have displayed on my car now is 434 miles which is 34 miles more than what I need which is brilliant I mean it's going down now because we're going up a hill um, what distance average have you done lordy lordy I'm over 40 good gracious me I've done it ah! <laughs> I've got 30 miles per gallon <laughs> I took 30 miles per gallon in the C63. That's amazing. I've only been driving for 47 minutes, uh, 52 minutes, and I've done 48 miles, an average speed of 54 miles per hour, and I've done 30 miles per gallon already. I actually had to stop um, a few miles back to sort out my cameras because they were uh, messing up, and this Skoda decided to slow down as they were taking me, which means I had to decelerate. I hate the British network of driving, everyone's in the discipline and driving is completely inconsiderate. That is a whole new topic, but I am absolutely startled at this news I've just been given by my car. 30 miles per gallon in a 6.2 litre V8. It was never designed to see such figures and it's now ticked over to that figure. 
Oh, I'm so proud to be part of the club that has ticked over that um, figure. That is fantastic. And like I said, I actually had to stop over to sort out my camera equipment because um, it started to mess up and stopped recording, which was quite inconvenient. So I actually probably would be more like 30.5 or 31 miles per gallon even. So that is absolutely amazing. Um, I've got, I've actually got a bottle of chocolate milk in my um, glove box, which is actually air conditioned. If you didn't know that about your W204 C glass, it is air conditioned in there with a little um, fan. And my chocolate milk is in there, so I might just have to have a celebratory uh, glass of chocolate milk before that. That is fantastic. Anyway, I am talking way too much, so I am going to listen to a podcast. Put a time lapse on, and then I'll probably join you in an hour or two and see what sort of focus we'll be getting up to. Anyway, I will join you later, and bye for now. everyone you now join me about an hour and a half later and we've been on the road for about two hours and 40 minutes i've just joined the a1m and we've averaged around 31.8 miles per gallon which is absolutely incredible i'm not sure we'll be able to hit 32 it's going to be hit and miss i think it's kind of uh, i know it's a bit of a stalemate now i think it's just kind of sitting at that sort of figure it keeps fluctuating around 31.5 to 31.8 um, so that might be the highest we get. Who knows? It might surprise me later on. We've currently covered around 159 miles, which is quite a generous amount. And on my sat nav, it's saying 233 miles remaining. And our ETA is to be two o'clock. It's going to take roughly about three hours and 40 minutes to do so. So, so far, so good, really, because the needle on the fuel gauge it's kind of just dipped between under three quarters it's still more halfway from half and three quarters but it's getting somewhat near the middle point between half and three quarters so we've still got a fair amount to play with because we've already done 160 miles i'd like to think by the time we get to half the tank we could be around 220 230 miles covered which means we have a massive surplus if need be so yes so far the figures that i've been given are quite generous and it looks very promising however i did see on one of the gantries that a the a1 junction 39 to 41 expect major delays i saw which i don't know where junction 39 or 41 is because i haven't been in a1m for too long it might be able to see in this little thing here this sign might tell me what junction we're on but that's not good news and that's why we do need a surplus to find out so it essentially gives us enough fuel to get to edinburgh i think this is junction 37 oh blimey that's literally in two two junctions time I mean, well apparently there's road work so i don't know how bad they're going to be i haven't actually got my aircon on um, i didn't need it this morning because it was quite fresh but i am starting to get a bit toasty so i don't know if i'm going to put myself through misery to make sure i get more fuel on me and i've also made sure the tires uh the pressures are quite uh, solid because obviously it's less rolling resistance um, for the tyre so although it might wear them more it's much needed for this journey because I'm going to need every single MPG and every single fuel I can get uh, hence why I've got a jerry can in the back uh, full of five litres if need be if I do start to chicken out but I'd like to think with our rate of progress so far 31.8 miles per gallon we won't need to really do that so yeah a bit tense but I'm actually quite excited because the car's performing so well at the moment but anyway um, that's enough talking for now um, next time we might talk is when I'm about to approach a service station I want to do that properly when we're a bit closer to the halfway point 
we've been travelling for 166 miles, we've still got 226 to go, so I probably will stop it around, we've got 150 miles left. Take it easy and I'll speak to you soon. Okay everyone, you now join me at Ormwick. I don't know the pronunciation, so apologies, but uh, we got there and I she's had to get out of the car and literally just stretch my gluteus maximus because they were getting very numb. Uh, we're currently about 85 miles away from Edinburgh and uh, the current MPG we've done so far is 32.1 miles per gallon, which is rather excellent if I don't say so myself. I'm actually chuffed to bits with how amazing we're doing. Um, We've done 307 miles so far. We've um, we've been on the road for about five hours and 18 minutes, an average speed of 58 miles per hour. And our fuel gauge is looking quite, um, what's the word, unhealthy. Um, we were roughly around a quarter of a tank, but the needle is still just above the quarter um, pin. So yeah, it's quite touch and go, but 85 miles might just be all right. So yeah. The journey has been alright so far as well. When I last left you, I was on the A1 and I remember junction 39 to 41, I said there was like heavy delays and there was, so I had to come off of that junction, make a two mile detour to come back on the A1. Uh, so that didn't really help the MPG situation. Um, the headwinds are absolutely terrible, um, so that probably isn't helping either. And even though it's a Sunday where it's good for Sunday drivers and people driving slow, uh, well, everyone's driving slower than 65, which I thought would be the opposite. I thought everyone would be overtaking me, but I'm actually overtaking everyone else. But there's so much intermittent driving um, that it just keeps causing me to slow down and, and accelerate. So it's not good for my fuel consumption. And yeah, I don't want to talk too much about driving because I'm quite hungry. And when you talk about bad driving, whilst you're hungry you know i'm gonna say bad things and i don't want to say bad things on youtube so i am going to eat and i'll talk about those bad things later and i've got um, some chocolate milk which i've indulged on already which is fantastic so yeah um yeah so here's here's the figures i can show you quickly yeah that's our current situation as you can see 32.1 miles per gallon it was 32.2 but i had to faff around and try and find somewhere to park but yeah, that's our fuel needle situation. It's not looking overly generous, but 85 miles. And if need be, I can slow down a little bit and we should be golden. Right, I've now stocked up on all my food and I have rested well. And it's now time to start the final leg of our journey and break off, put it to drive. And next time we to speak, I suppose, or next time I stop is either a fuel station or on the roadside when I failed the j challenge. Although I do still have my jerry can with five litres in it, but I really don't want to rely on that. So I'm really going to be pushing it to the, the ragged edge in terms of how much fuel will be left. Just really feathering the throttle right now. The smallest of movements. Because the last thing I want to do is have an outburst of acceleration that the car thinks, oh yes, now I can actually drive fast. I'm going to dump all the fuel out of the exhaust pipes or wherever the fuel goes or in the engine. I'm not mechanically minded, so that's a very silly thing to say. But this is literally what the journey's been all about. It's just been about really being mindful how you accelerate and how you approach things. Is there enough room to accelerate there? Is there enough room to do this, that or the other? It's got me really far ahead of time in terms of planning. Like right now, I'm just trying not to break, but I can't foresee this Toyota Yaris to come out then. Which means that means I've got to kind of accelerate again, which is not ideal. Oh God, that was painful. The slightest movements there. Oh man, alive. Way says we got roughly an hour and 31 minutes left and 85 miles. I've got, I've done 307 miles so far and I've just got over a quarter of a tank. So, it's not 
not the most ideal situation in the world. Nice bend here. Oh, if I knew was, I could drive fast, it would be brilliant to accelerate out of. But unfortunately not. The most gentle acceleration in the world. 30 miles an hour. 35. 40. I can actually see the fuel needle going to... No! Stop! Please! Oh, this is actually painful. And because of that, I am probably now going to drive at 60 miles an hour all the way to our destination. How much does that affect our MPG? It's now 32 miles per gallon, whereas it was 32.2 when I got to the car park. So, yeah, we have lost a little bit, but hopefully the 60 miles an hour gentle drive all the way to the destination shall play in our favour and hopefully I have canoes to deliver to you next time we speak. So until then, bye for now. I also forgot to mention that uh, the distance that my computer is telling me. It's all right me telling you that there's a quarter of a tank or just a bit over. Um, but the distance that's been recorded on my computer, which is sometimes misleading, is saying I've got 90 miles of distance left, whereas it's about 82 miles to my destination. Now, I don't know if that's gonna change because um, now I'm driving at a consistent speed and I'm now driving up an incline, so I don't know if that's going to get much better or much worse. So yeah, is this going to be a lot closer than I thought it would be? I thought I was in quite a good position in terms of fuel economy um, quite a while back because I had quite a bit of a surplus, but for some reason, I don't know why this always happens, but it seems like when you get to the latter half of the fuel tank, you run out of fuel much faster. And I don't understand why. Why is that the case? Why is that a thing? Surely, if the car is less having less fuel in the system, then it'd be lighter, and therefore lighter means less weight, and it means the car's having to lug around less mass. So why am I losing fuel at a faster rate as soon as it ticks over half a tank? I, I don't understand. If, if any of you know the answer to that, please do shed some light on that, because I cannot for the life of me understand it at all but I can now report I'm now up to 100 miles of distance um, range so that's good news so yes next time I speak to you is probably when I'm a bit closer to the destination update for you guys I've got fuel on my oh my no I've only got like 45 miles to go uh, so yeah, the, um, yeah basically I've now got a reserve fuel level uh, it has gone under a quarter of the tank um, so yeah, that's not ideal. Uh, the distance still says 80 miles. So with, I don't know, what is it, 40, 45 miles? We still have like a 40, 35, 40 mile surplus. But this distance thing just keeps going up and down like a yo-yo every time I hit a hill. So I don't trust it. I mean, theoretically, we should still get there. I've just passed the Scottish border about five minutes ago. So we are past Berwick upon Tweed, wherever it's called, and we are fastly approaching Edinburgh. It's just, yeah, oh man. I am playing with fire a little bit now, but 40, 45 miles, 44 miles now. It should be doable, surely. With 80 miles surplus and just under a quarter of a tank left. I mean, I've done 348 miles so far with three quarters and a bit. So surely I should be able to do 40 odd miles with this. Oh man alive, this is getting so tense now. I'm actually sweating. I don't think it helps that I've got my aircon on. But I'm like, I'm putting an aircon on now. I can't be taking any risks, so I have to keep the aircon off. So I sweat all I like and shower and I go, but I can't repeat this journey again. And yeah, I need to really be careful and be mindful how much I am using the throttle. I'm like, I'm like focusing so hard, I'm, I'm so drained, but you've really got to like predict how people are braking and get off the accelerator and just try and not brake as much as possible. Approaching 
junctions, not obviously uh, sensibly, but limit, like keeping enough momentum so you don't have to accelerate after the corner. Just things like that. It's just been constantly going through my mind. Now that we're on the A1, where it goes into a single carriageway, and you've got roundabouts here and there as well. I, I thought the A1 was just a dual carriageway all the way, but it just keeps going in and out of uh, dual carriageways and single carriageways and then you get some roundabouts here and there so you have to really like predict how to drive however I can relay some good information to you obviously I've been in this Mercedes Benz for 6 hours and 24 minutes so far on the road moving and I have nothing but good things to say about it I know I briefly touched upon my glutes being a bit uh, numb but I don't have any back pain and I'm not, I'm not in pain I'm still somewhat perfectly comfortable in this AMG car which is mad considering it is an AMG car and it's meant to be stiff and you know sports cars are meant to be deemed as uncomfortable but I've literally been driving this for 352 miles so far and there's not been one point where I'm like I am in agony and I don't think I can continue this journey longer I've been happily relaxing I've been cruise controlling the car's been ticking over at about 1600 rpm it's not breaking a sweat and there's no noise really from the engine and the reason you can hear noise at the moment is because I'm kind of accelerating up this incline whereas if I was just on a flat surface you can, I don't think you hardly even notice the engine noise at all and you have to remember this is not a standard exhaust it's got a secondary cat and resonator delete and it's literally just been ticking over and whispering in my ear for the past six hours or so. Our current MPG is 32.1 miles per gallon, our average speed of 55 miles per hour. 353 miles um, so far have been covered and we have approximately 38 miles to go. And if we look at our distance, it now it says 70 miles. It just keeps going up and down. But if we look at the needle, we still have I'd say three quarters of a quarter left. So the needle's like uh, the, the three quarter mark and the quarter mark, if that makes sense. So we still have a generous amount considering we only need to do 30 odd miles. So this is getting very tense. <laughs> God, my, I love fuel economy. Anyway, that's enough of me talking now. I want to. I know, I suppose I'll update you when I'm really close to the destination. Uh, we'll see how it goes, so I'll catch you up in a few moments' time. Okay everyone, you now join me around, I don't know, uh, 0.7 miles away from my destination. We are now in Edinburgh, and can I just say, it's beautiful weather of course, but I didn't realise how stunning Edinburgh is. There's like, oh, these hills and mountains everywhere, and, and the scenery across the, the dual carriage up the A1, when you're looking at like, Berwick upon Tweed, and you have like, all the scenery, the sea next to the coast. I didn't realise how close everything was to the sea. It's a beautiful drive, but, uh, regarding my fuel situation, it's not looking generous. Um, if I just to, if I could show you, it, it, it basically in front of me, my, my digital display was like 30 miles range, and it just disappeared. And now all I can see is the emblem of my Mercedes staring right at me <laughs> with a red uh, fuel um, emblem saying "fill up" basically because you're about to um, conk out. So yeah, that's not ideal. But we're literally four miles away. Um, not four miles, four minutes away, 0.5 miles, and the needle is below eighth of a tank now. So, yeah, we're getting towards empty. There's no way I can actually check to see how much range I've got. It isn't, we won't tell you, will it? No, it won't tell you. And every time you, it, it just takes you off of the menu. No? Okay. We're done 32.1 miles per gallon. 391 miles, a journey time is 7 hours and 10 minutes and there's an average speed of 55 miles per hour. We're so close to this petrol station, I just don't know where it is. 
I've seen it on Google Maps. I know what it looks like, but it, it, it says it's in here. It says, <gasps> I can see it. I see it. That's 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 the petrol station. <laughs> see, that's the one. There's, oh God, there's no way I can mess this up now. Surely this is it. This is it. No way. I'm sorry how abrupt that was. I didn't realize how close we were and didn't realize it was literally my eyesight. Oh, oh my, this is actually it. There's no way I can fail now, surely. I've still got a little bit of needle left. It's probably a quarter of a quarter now, if that makes sense. So, I mean, a quarter of a quarter to do what, 200 yards? Um, come on, we must have this surely now, by now. And as these lights decide to never change, then we should we should be golden. 391 miles in the C63, 6.2 the air. Naturally aspirated V8. Here we go. It's not gonna feel real unless I'm actually on the forecourt. You can literally see the petrol station, it's literally over there right now. This is it, this is it, this is the petrol station. <laughs> no way! No way! <laughs> Some school tools are not looking where they're going. Uh, yeah, you go. Uh, yeah, 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 just go, go, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Right. Thank you very much. Wait, wait. Where are we going? Um. I suppose we go for this one. <laughs> what? I don't actually check what wrong we've got here. E5, 99 plus. Oh yes. The day gets better and better. You're welcome. I'm so happy right now. I've just got, I just made it from London to Edinburgh on one tank of fuel on a C63. Oh man. <laughs> oh man, I feel quite emotional. I better fill this up and then see how much fuel we actually had left and see how much further we can actually have gone. Oh wow, I've wanted to do this video for so long, for like two, three years. And now uh, I've finally made it reality and we actually made it from London to Edinburgh in one tank. Oh, I can't articulate any words to describe how I'm feeling right now. Over the moon, this is like a dream come true. Anyway, enough of the emotional nonsense. I need to fill this up and I will get back to you and see how much fuel we used and check out how much MPG everything is and just verify it. Is the end result of um, our journey essentially we got uh, just under eighth of a tank 32 miles per gallon 391 miles so an hours 30 minute journey time 54 miles per hour but yeah right let's go and fill this up and then i'll come back to you and talk to you guys what exactly happened okay moment of truth drink mercedes drink <gasps> that's a click I don't actually know what number we got. I haven't checked once. So what fuel we got? 59 litres. I've got a 66 litre fuel tank. Let's do some numbers. You join me a few days later, now that I've calmed down over the whole excitement of the trip. And I'd like to briefly consolidate my thoughts on not only the journey, but how amazing the C63 was. So I'm gonna do that before I delve into the exact MPG figures. And I'd like to start off with the C63 and how it just didn't break a sweat. If you'd have asked me, I would have spent 14 hours in this car in one sitting and told me a few days before that I'll be doing that. I would have thought I would have come out of the other end in just like a big pile of mush, but it couldn't be any further away from that. You have to remember this, not only did this actually do London to Edinburgh and back to my home, I had to get to London in the first place, which is an hour away, about 50, 60 miles. So it not, didn't just do 13 hours and 740 miles. It did more like 14 and a bit hours and 800 miles. And that was near enough an all in one sitting. And the, the car, it was seamless, it was flawless. It, and in terms of how I was feeling after all the driving, well, my lower back was still an ironing board when I got out. My glutes weren't misshapen and deformed, they were supple. Um, and that's just testament to how well this car is to just drive long distance. In fact, when I actually got to Edinburgh and stopped filming, 
I then actually only spent about 20 minutes there and I drove straight back home, which took me about six hours or so. And I didn't stop once. I mean, you can't give much higher praise than that. I, I literally drove six hours nonstop straight. And I, when I got out, I didn't feel too bad. I think I got a bit of knee pain, I have to admit, in my left knee because it was a sit, stood still for so long because obviously it's an automatic. Um, so I had to go for a quick 10 minute walk. And after that, I was completely fine. But OK, well, let's now find out exactly how much fuel this C63 actually used. So if we go on to mpgcalculator.co.uk, which is my favorite website and probably the most viewed website on my browser. So distance was 391 miles. The liters of fuel we used was 59.09. Verify that. There we go. And we did 32 miles per gallon on the computer. But if we calculate here, 30, 30.08 miles per gallon. That's really interesting because normally the computer's pretty much dead on with figures of, of all the MPG figures I've done with this car. It's always the same, but whereas this time it's different. That's interesting. But regardless, 30 miles per gallon is amazing. And of course, I'm just going to take that. I've got 32 on my computer. Um, so I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Now, I couldn't find out exactly how much further I could have gone. Because obviously this has got a 66 litre fuel tank. So I had to just kind of do a lot of mm, guessing with numbers. And eventually I got the right amount. So I took a screenshot here somewhere. And basically I put in, I kept putting in random numbers and eventually came up with the figure I was looking for. So I obviously did 30 miles per gallon. So I, with all the numbers I kept putting in, I eventually came with 47 miles and 7 litres of fuel use. And that equated to 30 miles per gallon, which is what I just achieved with that long journey. So if I did carry on until it was empty, because I still had 7 litres of fuel left, and went all the way to 66 litres and ran it dry, I would have got an extra 47 miles with seven litres of fuel. So I did 391 miles, and then if I carried on, I would have basically got, this is where my maths really falters, I would have got, um, <laughs> okay, after a lot of um, technical maintenance to me trying to work that out, it was 438 miles. Essentially, I would have been able to cover from empty to full. But all in all, I think that is a, an astonishing figure considering normally in the C63, people in ownership groups normally say, oh, I only get 150 miles of uh, range or 200 miles. In my case, more like 200 miles-ish uh, when I get, well, basically go from full to near enough empty. So the fact you could go over double that, and I did essentially double that in my London to Edinburgh trip, that is one hell of an astonishing figure in terms of fuel economy, especially for a naturally aspirated 6.2 litre V8. Who knew these cars could be so polar bear friendly? But to summarise, this car is absolutely incredible. Um, I just cannot believe how well the car performed, how effortless the whole journey was. I thought it would be a lot more difficult and I didn't actually think it would make it if i'm honest i i, I thought it would be close but i think i was going to cut short especially towards the end when the fuel gauge was going up and down so let me know in the comments if you thought the car was going to make it but i am just astounded how the car just performed and how it managed to do all that range and managed to do it in relative ease this is one astonishing car just another thing to add, just out of interest in terms of MPG, is that I went on Auto Trader to check the extra urban figure for this. And if the extra urban figure they claim is 33.6 miles per gallon. And I was so close, I was so close to getting that figure. So, and I think it can be done, if I'm honest, if I drove at more like 60 miles per hour or 55 and it didn't stop once. Um, I think you get that claim. But the fact that you can get 32 miles per gallon in this car or 30, I think the road tax should be reconsidered and be put down. So hopefully this video will help us C63 owners and will make sure um, the C63 gets a better name for fuel economy. 
Anyway, I uh, really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you do like these styles, then please let me know because it gives me a good indication of what I should, or should or should not be making. And if you have enjoyed it, then please do subscribe and give it a like and comment anything down below. And I'll try and give it my best back to you because it really does help push out the video into a wider audience and gives me a bit more um, exposure, which really does go a long way. So I really appreciate that. And thank you very much for watching and bye for now.